Howdy, and welcome back, guys. It seems the main focus on video games these days are its graphics. Which, you know, really isn't a bad thing. I've been guilty of buying a game solely based on how pretty it is to the eyes. Of course, I also enjoy a good story to go along with it. As long as the game is fun to play, who cares how striking the graphics are? Well, what's your point, Radar? I hear you asking. Well, my point is this. 8 bits, baby! You heard me right. Way before the workhorse consoles and PCs we have now, we had the glorious 8-bit generation. My first real console was the NES. I'm gonna let you know right now, I was automatically hooked. There was nothing like seeing those wonderful pixels dance across the screen and hearing those 8-bit meaty soundtracks. Oh, it was pure magic. So nostalgia, here we come with my own Top 5 8-Bit Games Countdown! At number 5, we find the nostalgia train is going on at full tilt. DuckTales found new life with higher resolution, a full voice cast, and a soundtrack that made every one of us squeal with delight. DuckTales originally made its appearance on the NES and Famicom in 1989. You are put into the role of Scrooge McDuck, who must travel the world to reclaim his stolen treasures. One of the best methods for Scrooge to get around was his cane, which could make you jump higher to reach places you couldn't get to normally. Of course, bopping your enemies on the head was also an added bonus. Way before Lords of Shadow and Mirrors of Fate comes my next pick at number four. Castlevania, originally released in 1986 to Japan audiences, quickly found a niche in the American market. Simon Belmont battles hordes of the undead as he makes his way to his final confrontation with Dracula. Whip isn't your only means of dispatching your enemies, however. You had holy water, a flying axe, and a flying cross which could be used as a boomerang. I think it's one of the best Castlevania titles to date. Having you think and use strategy as you make your way through six levels in order to reach your goal. We've reached the middle of my countdown. Why am I stopping? Well, I'm probably going to get a lot of flack for this one, especially from the Mario fans, and uh, many think that this probably should be at the top of the list, but you know, this is my list. And uh, that being said, let's all take a deep breath. And reveal number three. Super Mario Bros. 3 added the overworld map, many secrets to find, and several new power-ups like the Tanuki suit and the frog suit. The game was a lot of fun to play. Each map had a unique theme that presented you with new challenges to overcome. Uh, this one made me forget about Super Mario 2 for a while, and Lost Worlds doesn't count. Okay, moving on. Seeking adventure, have a need to explore, then my number two pick is just right for you. The Legend of Zelda had no restrictions, no hand-holding, no lengthy story setup, and no hour-long tutorials, thank God. You were thrown right into the action with nothing but your smarts and your sword. The later Zelda games kind of took away from the freedom to explore aspect of the original. The Legend of Zelda 
you were free to do anything you wanted to, go anywhere you wanted to, and just have fun. It also had the newly introduced save feature. And how cool is that? What's not to love? And finally, we've reached the top of the heap. The number one spot goes to... Metroid! So many power-ups, awesome bosses to fight, fully explorable maps, did I mention the weapons? Oh, yes. Of course, the reveal at the end was a big surprise, but what made this game great was the way it was presented, not to mention the music. It set the whole unsettling tone of the game, just what was lying beneath you in those expansive cave systems. Well, you'll just have to go below. It's the only option. There you have it! Your choices probably will vary, but these are the ones that I got the most enjoyment out of, and spent many hours in front of my TV button-mashing my controller. The NES library has tons of great games, and the best part is, a lot of them are still available through emulators and finding new life with a whole new generation of gamers on new consoles. So there's really no excuse not to experience these gems. So, that's it for me. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to like and comment below. It truly helps me out. Till next time, adios.